It's really good. I don't see any reason to waste a lot of time on this review. If you like Avengers, if you like some of the later Marvel films, you're going to love this. It's up the game even further. We've been introduced to fun new characters. Elizabeth Olsen as Scarlet Witch was nice. Quicksilver, her brother, not so much. There's nothing wrong with him, but I, I like his uh, interpretation in Days of Future Past a little more. I'm not going to give any spoilers because this movie just came... I'm just seeing in my flipper here that I got like... I'm not trying to show off my chest or anything. Sorry. Sorry. It's actually hot out here in Minnesota. It's nice for once. It's like 75, 80 degrees. It's gorgeous. Uh, maybe it's because I saw the Avengers, so everything just feels, feels nicer out. Is it better than Avengers 1? Mm, there's an argument that could be made either way, and it's going to next week on Movie Feuds. I'm going to be arguing with... Uh, I don't know. Let me... The hell am I talking with? What the flick? They're coming on. We're going to debate. It should be a good time. Hulk has more time in this. I know everybody's been wanting that. Uh, Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow has more time in this. Jeremy Renner's Hawkeye has more time in this. Nobody was asking for that, but we got that. Black Widow's got some cute little light up suit outfit on. I, I dig it. I don't really know what it is. Man, it looks like this is going to be a dark video. Sorry, I guess I'm kind of covered in shade. I didn't really, you know, I like to do these car sides right after I see the movie and I can just uh, say whatever's on my mind. Let's, let's really rapid fire some stuff. Captain actually has the best lines in the film, which is refreshing because normally I think Captain's kind of the lamest character. Here I had more fun watching him than anybody else. Villain wise, Loki or Ultron, I'm not sure. Ultron had a lot of humorous dialogue. I wasn't expecting that from the trailers. And I don't think he said the no strings on me line, which kind of pisses me off because it was all over. Maybe he did and I missed it. I mean, this is a two and a half hour movie, so. Which reminds me, for a two and a half hour movie, it still felt like the movie was a little disjointed and rushed at times. Like things could have been uh, a little bit better explained. Some characters could have used a little bit more time to develop. I thought the Hulk Black Widow love story kind of came out of nowhere. I know we are to assume during the downtime between films that uh, they kind of you know, develop this relationship. But when you go from the Avengers 1, where she's scared shitless of the Hulk, to Avengers 2, where she's just, for some reason, horny over him, I, I can't help but think there was something missing that we needed to be more subtly brought into. I want to bring up a point about the cutting room floor. I know movies get, get a lot cut, you know, in the final product, but it's really starting to feel like movies have decided they're going to have their own form of DLC, like video games, where you can go to the movie and get an experience, but... If you want the true experience, buy it on DVD, Blu-ray, digital, because then we're going to give you all the extra stuff that you really want to see, like uh, 10 more minutes of Hulk uh, killing guys, or why did this make no sense in the film, but now suddenly does. It's a little frustrating. It's like the X-Men Rogue edition. You cut fucking Rogue from the movie and put her in her own edition? Seriously? We're talking eight minutes. You couldn't stretch the film eight minutes further, X-Men? That's BS. And coming from Fox, yeah, I, I, I'm calling their bluff on that, but I'm going to get back on track here. Action is much better in this one, I thought, and there was more of it. The, the first movie, as much as I love it, it felt like there was a long lull for like a half hour, 45 minutes, building up to that final fight. This one, we get a really cool introduction fight that I wasn't expecting, and maybe is the highlight of the film. And then you get a couple in the middle sprinkled throughout, and then of course the big one at the end uh, to wrap things up. So you are constantly engaged. As for the ending, you can stick around for maybe two minutes, because after this little hero montage, you get one shot. I'm not going to say what it is. It's nothing big, though. And then nothing. So don't wait till the after credits. There's nothing there. You're welcome. If Avengers 1 is a 10 out of 10 superhero film, which I think it is, not a movie in general, just a superhero film, then uh, I'm going to give Age of Ultron a 10. I will not, I refuse to choose right now. I'll do that next week. But this needs more time to uh, accumulate in my brain. I need, to, I need to let it digest a little bit more, let it sink in. I think that there's flaws just like the first, but when it comes to seeing a bunch of superheroes kick ass on screen, this does the job. Head on over to Feud Nation though, if you're not familiar with the channel, subscribe. I do a lot of movie stuff and just random things in general. It's a lot of fun, I keep it loose. And next week, movie feud on Avengers vs. Avengers 2. I'll be talking about Age of Ultron a lot this month, so you know, look forward to it. There's gonna be some other stuff, but I'm gonna focus. I'm gonna focus down on this. It's comic book time, right? It's the summer.
Take care.